Well, last fall's decision by General Motors to mothball its historic Oshawa, Ontario car manufacturing factory at year end sent shockwaves through the region and the industry. Union leadership vowed to do everything in their power to reverse that decision. Well, today, a $170 million investment from General Motors was announced in what they called a transformation agreement for the 100 year old plant. All this with Unifor, the Auto Workers Union. Jerry Dias is the president of that union, joins us from Toronto. Well, Jerry, I'm trying to figure out how good the news is and how or, or whether we should be saying, huh, better than nothing, but just barely. How do you see it? Well, look, I'm devastated when I think about the impact it's going to have on, our, on the families in Oshawa, not just within the assembly plant, but in the supplier base. So I'm frustrated. I'm upset. But look, you play the cards in your, your dealt and you try to make the best out of a terrible situation. Ultimately, our goal was to get another vehicle, but GM hasn't announced a new vehicle in any plant at any time this year. And do I believe one is going to fall out of the sky from now till December? The answer is no. So what do you do? So we found a way to keep people employed. We've kept the lights on. We've kept the door open, and we'll see where this thing takes us. Right. I mean, you, you saved just over, I guess, about 10% of the jobs that were there, but that's better than zero, I guess, is what you're saying. Well, no, that's not what I'm saying. Here's what I am saying. Two key things came out of this. Number one, we've maintained the integrity of the plant, which means we're going to keep the paint shop or, and we're going to keep the ability uh, to build future vehicles. Number two, the investment is going to lead to a first ever GM initiative, which is their aftermarket project, which is... 10-year commitments on individual platforms. Let me give you an, an example. The Buick Enclave, the last one is built. For 10 years, you have to build parts, uh, quarter panels, doors, hoods, trunks, lift gates. So we're going to start to build that stuff now in Oshawa. So even though the announcement of jobs today was seemed minuscule, Six months from now, it'll be a lot more than that. Six months, it'll be more than that. Six months, it'll be more than that. So this mm -hmm. is a business or this is a field that's got some real legs, real opportunities. So we'll see. But once again, we've maintained the footprint and we'll see what happens. Well, I've done my, my driving record shows. I've done my part to keep you busy with aftermarket parts. But I want to yeah. get your thoughts, though, on the, uh, the semi-autonomous track that's going in there. What's that all about? Well, it, look, they have a lot of land. They have a lot of parking lots. So they have the uh, GM Tech Center, and they want to be able to make autonomous vehicles, uh, electric vehicles, and, and they're going to test them here in Canada, which I see as a positive, because wouldn't it make sense to build those vehicles in Oshawa and test them on their own track? But, uh, Don, a, a lot of people were questioning our sanity about fighting in the first place. But you always have to understand mm -hmm. that, this Oshawa plant will not be the first plant that GM has ever mothballed or kept alive that somehow has come back to life. Their Orion plant in Michigan back in 2009, they totally mothballed it for two years. They reopened it in 2011, and just recently, within the last few months, they announced a $300 million investment that will create another 400 jobs. Spring Hill, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Totally closed, 2009. No more vehicle manufacturing, just build parts. Sounds like Oshawa. Here we are today with 3,700 members and an announcement last year that they're putting on a third shift. I can go on and on and on. The key thing is you got to keep the lights on. All right. And I'm just curious, I don't want to put, make this too dramatic, but does this say anything about the future of auto manufacturing or auto parts in Ontario-wide or Canada-wide? Well, look, the, the elephant in the room in the auto industry was always Mexico, and it still is to a large extent. But we're starting to fix some of the mechanisms that have caused all the grief. Uh, the Mexican government just announced the elimination of the protection agreements, which actually has the employers carving deals with bogus yellow unions that workers never have a say on. So those pieces of the mm -hmm. puzzle are starting. But there's a lot of work to do. Canada's a great place to build vehicles. If you take a look at the fact that the Canadian dollar and the U.S. dollar were at 75 cents, it's a lot cheaper to build vehicles in Canada than the United States. If you take a look at our national health care plan, that eliminates another six, seven dollars an hour off the cost. So it's a major, major advantage to building in Canada. But we need all the levels of government pushing as aggressively as we are. And I believe that's going to happen in the future. All right. Jerry Dias, uh, well, congratulations on getting that deal mm. done. Uh, I know you tried your best. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Don.